Get ready for hot takes and insight from local industry experts in real estate, business, and lifestyle. He used to play ball with the Padres. He played hockey for the Lobos. Now they're crushing it in the real estate game. Together, they'll showcase the best of the Duke City. This is All About You ABQ. Yeah. <laughs> right away. Uh, oh, yeah. The goal of the show is to highlight the best of our city's industry experts in real estate culture and lifestyle so you walk away with some value, feeling inspired. Now, the way we like to do that is to answer the questions you may have or interview the guests you want to see. So we invite you to join the conversation. You can reach out on social media up here or join our email list to get some timely tips about our community and real estate market. Hey, I'm Skip Adams, owner of Sold by Skip Real Estate here in Albuquerque. I'm Grant Harvey, home loan expert. You probably know Grant as the head coach of the University of New Mexico men's Lobo hockey team, but now he's absolutely crushing it in the mortgage space. You've probably seen Skip in Home Alone 3 and HGTV's House Hunters and part of the top two percent producing real estate agents in the city. Here's where you're going to want to stay tuned. We're joined in studio by Theodore Bridgman of the archery shop. Here Brigman. Brigman. Bri the bridge man. Yeah, that's not how he Theodore is the bridge man. I, he just walked out. Diddy? Yeah. No, not their, Diddy. No, not Diddy. Bridgman. Let's bring P. Diddy out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so wild episode. You're going to want to stay tuned to the end. It's everybody's favorite. Skips, tips, yeah. rant. Dude, what What a wild weekend. Yeah, first just ping all, pong and ideas. Should first we go? of all, it's always tough to get me to go out on a weekday. Uh, you know, I've got... Uh, I got a whole tribe of kids at home, so it's always tough to, to you know, stay out late on a school night. And late for me is past eight thirty. So, <laughs> yeah. no more sodas for him, or he. <laughs> but we we were able to, we were able to hang out. Sorry, on a Thursday night, which was great. And then you tried to get me to go out multiple nights over the weekend, yeah. and I felt like a jerk. I felt like an old man, if I'm being honest. But no, nah, I can't. Yeah. Maybe some other time. What about the next night? I actually, you <laughs> got me in a real bad time in my life. It's now, until yeah. ten years from now. Yeah, now. Come in a lot of bad era. Do you ever have friends that say, "Hey, you caught me in a bad era. Wait till I'm eighty. <laughs> I'm going through some stuff yeah. right now." Um, but one thing we always threaten to do on, on our show is is go back and revisit some of yeah. the some of the places, some of the guests, some of the businesses that have been on our show. Yeah. And we had the opportunity to do that this last week on Thursday. Yeah. Um, Brian Brian Luna, yeah, show favorite, um, fan favorite. He's got his hand in a handful of businesses. One yeah. of them being Oak and Ivy. Now Oak and Ivy is this. A posh restaurant that took over the old Yanni's in mm -hmm. Knob Hill. So probably the best location for a restaurant you can possibly Very have. Very good. Part of the revival. Have a, a lot of things that are partitioned. And then and it's, um, I guess what I say, when it coalesces, it's got quite the venue for dining and the transitioning into a posh nightclub. So plenty of room. Like what's most people's complaint about clubs is there's not enough room, no place to sit. It's got plenty of it and it's got, you know, kind of velvety nice seats and gives you that the dark ambiance and DJ stand, yeah. So a real Vegas Scottsdale feel to it and it a uh, great place for brunch, dinner and then after dinner drinks and dancing. So yeah. it's kind of an all inclusive place. You just kind of move from room to room as the night progresses. So we uh, we took the girls out for dinner and uh, Mark, let's roll that clip. Okay, here we are at Oak and Ivy. Brian Luna came on the show, and we promised everyone that we would do a follow-up segment of our show, visiting every business and person that was uh, that we interviewed. So, follow me. So the gist of this place was a restaurant and bar, and so they have, this is a great brunch spot, so we're gonna visit it one more time. We're gonna do brunch here, but you know, we're here on a, a Thursday night, and uh, I kind of like the vibe. Let's get it. Oh, you still following me? Okay, follow me again. I'll try. I'll pass. So this is where it pops off on the weekend. You want to do a little bit of dancing. You're done eating. You're done tripping over chairs. This is where I put my wheels of steel. DJ, tornado, Harvey. Yeah, so look at this, it's pretty posh over there, right? So posh. Yeah, this needs some production down there. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So what I would what I say I really enjoy about this place is in the clubs, right? You're always in someone's way. You're always in someone's way in the club. There's a lot of square feet in here to ensure that you probably dance and not spill someone's beer and then all over your suede shoes. 
more room, and uh, look, it's got the right atmosphere. So I think they did a good job with it. Dude, Brian, kick-ass spot, man. Yeah, nice, man. Hey, stay tuned for more follow-up episodes. This is UAV. Tiesto's coming. <laughs> That's true. Tiesto is coming. He is coming. He, and came, he came later that night. Oh, shoot. We missed him. Oh, he's coming P, again. P. Diddy's coming today. <laughs> yeah, he's coming in uh, handcuffs. So that turned out to be a fun night. We had uh, we had some appetizers. The food was delivered. It was good. The, the appetizers were fantastic. Mark, and actually, do you have that clip, Mark? And if if not, it's not a big deal. But I wonder how many square feet that place. We had is. yeah. Check it out. We had some chicken wings. Then we had corn ribs, and then what do you just ordered? Broccoli, right? Well, yeah, because I can't eat like you. I'll be dead shortly. But yeah, check out the location. It's right there on. The chicken wings are good. Let me tell you, I'm not, I don't really see what the fuss about chicken wings is, but I like them a lot. I don't, I'm not like, oh, let's go out for wings and, you know, because Buffalo Wild Wings has the best atmosphere. I love steel stools. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the wings were pretty good and they, they ate about every variety and uh, I had a really nice salad because I take care of my body and I care about myself. Yeah, your body's a temple. Mine's a garbage heap. <laughs> Don't, look at, look at, I'm all like swollen. No, dude. I'm hey, all swollen. No, he's gonna make me do. No, you're doing fine. No, Don't no, no. talk like that. Hey, God, you're no, better than I'd, that. I'd be with you. But so I did get a phone call from Grant the next night. Like, dude, that was fun. Guess what? I got concert tickets. Let's go back to Revel. Yeah. And he's all, oh, sorry, you should have caught me 20 years ago. <laughs> um, so we went to Revel. Don't have any footage of that. It's all Zed's dead. Wild music, you know, I like a little bit of wild music, so it was, it was, you're beating off the path. I would kind of call it the hard rock heavy metal of EDM, so it goes, you know, goes pretty hard. I think three people lost feeling in their legs from uh, head banging so hard, but, you know, had a great time. Then we're going to Electric Playhouse, where my friend Nick does not tell me, oh, it's going to be the same genre as last night. I'm like, I can't do this anymore, so I stayed about for 30 minutes, and then I decided to close my eyes and pretend I was somewhere else. But, I, no, I I like, I like uh, the, the Electric Playhouse is a really fun venue. I was kind of funny online and I felt bad. I want to clear the air. Electric Playhouse is, is great and fun. I was just kind of making fun of like the crowd there. Um, and they host whatever. We, we actually had our uh, mixer there and, and I like what they do. The only people I bad mouth is Wiener Schnitzel, maybe um, uh, J Jimmy Jones or Jerry Jones or whatever that sandwich. <laughs> Jimmy Trump. Johns. Jimmy dude. Johns and then oh, uh, Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. yeah. So other than that, other than that uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. But I we we did get a cease and desist from Wiener Schnitzel after two, e two episodes of Guess what? On him. I hate you, Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> now what? Sue me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that speaks to just, uh, you know, Albuquerque it has come a long way with different venues. You know, the, the Electric Playhouse, whether it's Revel, uh, Oak and Ivy. There's, there's all kinds of new things to do here, especially post-COVID, man. And it's like our city's in a, a little bit of a rebirth and, and a growing period. The, the amount of square feet that that place had, um, Oak and Ivy, I didn't know that. I, it just, we just kept going. And then when we were on our last segment part, and then it went to another room, I was like, wow. And I always like wandering in clubs. It wasn't kind of neat adventure, like, let's go see what's going on in this room. Oh no, a bunch of has-been you know, hu hussies. Oh. <laughs> That's what we would always say. These guys are wearing jinkos. I'm going to the other room. I like them. I'm going to form their gang. <laughs> Uh, man, what else has been going on with you, buddy? Uh, well, um, I'm entering my vegetables in the state fair coming on Friday. Yeah, that's going to be a highlight episode for those of you who wanted to remember me at a better era. <laughs> um, and then uh, I had this the drive for the Presbyterian Ear Institute. I am currently up to 8300 bucks. I'm going to get my goal of 10000 I have two days. I think I'm going to do it. Well, you've been pushing hard on social yeah. media. You've got some good support there. And, I do. And again, another former guest of the show. So we're Yeah, I'll be able to do a follow-up with that. You know what's really funny about that goal is uh, they gave me a goal of 1000 and, and I met it in a night. I'm like, yeah, give me something hard. So I go make my goal 10000 So I go, that's that's easy to do. I get to five, six, and I'm like, damn, like this is going to be yeah, hard. It's like running and, in mud and after And I'm going to go up there and be like, the only guy I didn't make his goal, Grant Harvey. And I'm like, it was self-imposed, and what an idiot. I could have just called it a day, but I really do think I can pull this off. <laughs> well, it's a good cause. It'll be a good event. And again, we have links to all that stuff on our website as well. And if you don't mind writing me a hot check that won't cash, but until <laughs> after the event, just post date it till after the event. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. So you don't get called out. He was, he reached 20 million. Fair skip. <laughs> yeah. It's all in Bitcoin. It's overseas accounts. So <laughs> yeah. Can't, I can't talk about it. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a transition here in the Albuquerque real estate market as we start to see, um, you know, more homes on the market as well. And uh, so it's starting to be a little bit of a more balanced market. And we'll, we'll kind of jump into that as I, as I uh, tease Skip's tips. But yeah. is there anything that's kind of got you flustered this week? Glad you asked. Whoa, didn't see their camera. Yeah, I, I guess we should probably kick off a Grant's rant. <laughs> Love that noise. 
All right, let's talk about the things that are just currently annoying me, and you guys can relate to this. I-25 is a mess. I-25 then has cars wreck on it to get it to a three lane, to a two lane, and maybe a, a, a two lane. You might as well move the two lane because you're not going to drive through Albuquerque. But here's the issue with it. Why are we not doing night construction? It's hot as hell. I'm sure the construction workers would love this idea, mutually beneficial, but we're the only ones that go, no, we start our road construction at 4.30 p.m. That way, no cars will be on the road. Terrible idea. It's ruining my life. It makes me late to this show almost every day, and I may not make it one time. Okay, let's talk about AM, FM radio, and people say, hey, you, do you listen to talk radio? And I'm like, I don't even want to hear me on my show. No, I don't listen to AM radio. I don't really care about what other people think about road construction besides myself, or they want to talk about sports. I don't want to hear about local yahoos think about the Dallas Cowboys. It's, it's already done conversation at that point. No one listens to AM, FM radio, and if you ask me, why don't you don't listen to that? You're surprised? No, I'm surprised you're still doing it. You might as well, like, I don't know, go to, go to the retirement home already. End it. Car washes with the crazy strip club uh, scents they give you. Do you want bubble gum or cherry or, or, or you know, Jubilee or the last dancer uh, scent in there? No, I don't. Can you just put normal? No, you probably need some pine tree. I don't. I don't need pina colada. I just want normal scents in there. I want common sense in my car. Okay, let's talk about the solar guy salesman. Everyone's heard about you. You're not new to the you're not new to the beat. Please get out of here. I don't care what incentives they're offering. The incentives were supposed to be over four years ago. No, this is the last year where Obama's plan carried over. Dude, I, by now I don't want it. I just uh, you know I'd, I'd rather just pay P and M. I wouldn't rather pay P and M, but I don't want to see you anymore. Walmart doesn't have touch pay. I found out last night. Yes, it's already dissed on myself for admitting I went to Walmart, but I had no choice. I was trying to get propane. Ended up with these four propane tanks. Yeah, we don't take touch. Okay, well, Walmart, good luck with these four propane tanks. I'm not taking them back. Why can't motorcycles ever call it a day when they've passed all the cars? If they see another one, maybe in Las Cruces, they're like, oh, I've got to go. So if you're going 140, they need to go 150. I don't understand. They'll be dead soon. Infomercial is going up by 120 decibels. Ever fell asleep to the TV, and then all of a sudden, uh, these knives that can cut through pipes are like, oh, for a limited time only, three easy payments and one hard payment. You know, they, I, don't, I don't really need to hear about that. The election campaign, last thing. Who isn't decided by now? Do we really need more commercials? Huh, who's this Trump guy? Oh, who's Kamala? We know by now. Hold the election already. If you're spending any dollars, no one's on the fence. No one. That's my grand rants. <laughs> like that? Wow, buddy. Buddy. Did I get it? Did you have some coffee this morning before ranting? I had coffee. You covered all. Every, all bases. All the bases And I covered. don't even like baseball. Yeah. I do. Thank you for that sympathy, <laughs> yeah. sympathy plug. Who's, who's watching? You know, the, the average tick of baseball, too. Like, isn't that a crazy ticket? Baseball Oh, tickets. it's absurd. That's why we moved here. Because you go to the isotopes, it's like $23 for the whole family. Remember we get invited to like 89 suites? They're, all, they're just giving away suites. All you have to do is <laughs> promise to pay $7 for the rest of your life. But it's actually a pretty good bargain here. Yeah, it's a good time. Especially if little kids running around, you can confine them. Don't have to worry about people. In jail. <laughs> in jail. <laughs> Stadium jail. Uh, coming up next, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. We're joined by Theodore Bridgman of the Archery Shop here in town. Now, you did it? He got the fast name right? It's Bridgman. It's okay. the Bridgman. We got the nod. He's coming back on the show. <laughs> Welcome back to UABQ. I'm Skip Adams, owner of Sold by Skip Real Estate Brokerage here in Albuquerque. Grant Harvey, home loan expert. We're joined in studio by Theodore Bridgman of the Archery Shop here in Albuquerque. Yes, sir. This is what I love about archery, man. Archery is having like a little bit of a renaissance. I feel like that's uh, something that's that's hot right now is to go out, you know, shoot arrows in your backyard and. Um, and, and kind of even go on dates. You can go on like a date to an archery shop and like... And shoot your date if it's not going well. Well, if she sucks, <laughs> of course she would. But, the, but it gets, it's the old apple on the head trick. Um, but talk a little bit about, Theodore, first of all, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. And you've got a cool story in the fact that you're not even, you're not from Albuquerque, but right. how the hell did you end up here? Yeah, so I, I came out here uh, for a job to work with kids and I did that for 11 years and um, my in-laws own the archery shop, so naturally I started shooting. Um, we, you know, uh, Amanda, uh, my wife and I, we went to the archery shop. She showed me around. I started shooting. I'm like, man, this is fun, right? And so, how old were you when you started that? Um, let's see, what am I now? Uh, 29, 28. Wow, so you're yeah, a latecomer. So I'm a latecomer. That's a good story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't start in it. So, um, yeah, we we went on a date there, and then I found out who her parents were, and like, oh yeah, they own it, and avid hunters, like avid avid hunters throughout the state of New Mexico and around the country, 
Um, so they kind of talked me into, oh, you should put in. And so first year I happened to draw the Sandias, which is extremely hard to do, right? It's so let's, let, let's talk thing. a little bit about that. So one of the yeah. cool things about New Mexico, which people from all over the world are starting to discover, is that we do have mountains, outdoor space, and fantastic hunting. Yeah. I mean, whether you're shooting Ibex, you go to yeah. Ibex? Yeah. You go to Ibex? Check those hunt? out. Um, or, you can, <laughs> or, uh, or elk or deer or whatever it is. Yeah. We had, what, bear? We had obviously a mountain lion last week was yeah. carried out of our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah bear, um, mountain lion, uh, bighorn sheep, orcs. That's, uh, they got shuffled in here years ago and now they're native to the area. Wait, what is one that most likely walked up to me at a gas station when I was in Las Vegas, New Mexico? A homeless guy. No. <laughs> a bum? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, it could have been an elk. I don't, you would no, have known that, right? It you, wouldn't have been an elk. It looked like, it might have been a, an ibex. Yeah. Would that make sense? Uh, I mean, typically, no. I mean, typically they're kind of up more in the mountainous areas and things like that. But yeah, but if you have a gas station, wouldn't you just know. skip the middleman and eat some hot Cheetos? Yeah. <laughs> you sure? You sure it wasn't a bum? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but so you are not always into archery and hunting. Right. And I think that's one of the things that's kind of taking over is that once you start sh firing off arrows, mm -hmm. the next step to graduating is to go on a hunt. Yeah. You had pulled a tag for mm -hmm. the Sandias, which is like one of the best hunts because it's yeah. right in the backyard. Yep. Talk you about your sleep, sleep in your own bed at night. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Talk about your experience. With yeah. Your so that was uh, two years ago, back in 2022. Um, and that's where I really started getting into it, right? First first time I ever had gone and truly hunted, definitely first time with a bow. Uh, so we go up, you know, we're a week into it and I'm kind of getting bummed because I'm like, man, I'm not being successful. And, you know, and they're like, it, it doesn't happen for everybody. You know, it's not like, it's an automatic thing. That's why it's called hunting, not killing, right? So we end up going up, I'm, <clears throat> we spot a really nice one. And uh, it's about a mile and a half, two miles away. So I end up going down a mountain, back up a mountain, and then I put on a stalk for, it was probably about three, four hours, then came back around, lined everything up perfect. I finally felt like in my groove, you know, they talk about buck fever and you're shaking all that. Like this was the first time where I was like, no, I'm dialed in, right? And so 67 yards away, uh, put one out, took him down, and I'm up at the top of the Sandias, and I'm just sitting in this uh, bowl at the top of the mountain. Nobody else is around. It's just me and this animal that I just took, right? I'm going to feed my family with it. And then I'm just sitting there. I'm like, man, this is the closest to God I've ever felt. Like, I, it, I, it's so hard to express or explain to anybody who hasn't done it. It changed everything because I was like, this is what I want to do for a living. So I ended up changing careers after 11 years, and I got into, I work over at the archery shop now. What were you doing into, before? Uh, I worked at the New Mexico Boys and Girls Ranch. Okay, it's yeah. a group care home for at-risk yep, teenagers. Yep, yep. Yeah, and uh, but you know I had I had put the time in there, and I was just like, man, I, I want to go do something else. And the way that that made me feel in that moment it changed my life. And I was like, this is what I want to do. So I guide, I hunt, I work at the archery shop, I do all the social yeah. media, business management stuff over there, and. I've enjoyed it ever since. Well, that's truly a, a, a New Mexican tale. I mean, yeah. I feel like you know, hunting to feed your family is, is not something that's new to our state. Yeah. And I think, the, you know, the, the story of getting into hunting itself, I mean, that's a, that's a big step you have to take from, you know, shooting arrows. <laughs> oh, that, are you a shooting, too? <laughs> shooting arrows in a, in a warehouse right. versus you know, covering yourself in doe piss and, and hiking through the exactly. mountains yeah. in the middle of winter. I think it would actually serve a purpose now. I can finally just start throwing doe <laughs> piss on myself and actually, actually apply it. <laughs> um, so let me get, I think if I understand, I haven't hunted in my life and I may sure. never, but I, you know, I'm one of those guys that go, okay, you can. And, yeah. Um, the process of the hunt is part of the dynamic, right? It's the, and a lot of people, um, think that they just go out and shoot and whatever it's the tracking them down that's usually what 85 percent of it is to get that yeah, close a, and to get you know be in a shot that's it's not supposed to be this miraculous shot you take i think some people do that and it's looked down upon sure right you're not yeah. supposed to say oh i could it was to hunt and get a close proximity yeah. to where you, that was the skill um and and i don't know if you ever read the comfort crisis have you because mm -hmm. it would tie in it tells a whole story about anthropology from this okay. guy's hunt that had never hunted before and realized how much calories he burned and like cutting the meat and his whole journey of it it was fascinating i wasn't a hunter but i was kind of captivated about the path anyway yeah. don't get too far no. fetch but <laughs> what is the other like what else kind of rivals that that you could tell the viewers yeah, people, some people have their lives changed by surfing, dropping into big waves, because yeah. you get that rush, and you had talked about the fever you get, the shake yeah. or whatever. It yeah, is. I mean, you got the, ad the adrenaline's going, your endorphins, your dopamine's you dumping, like everything. Like, a, like, a, like drag racing or yeah. something that's just so intense, and you're yeah. like, I, I'm, I'm, now that I've experienced this, like, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. so I've, I mean, if you've ever played sports, high school sports, whatever, and you're in that big game and you have that big moment and you're responsible for making that big moment happen, like that's the closest I could probably put okay. it to. Um, the, Skip the birth of my daughter was cool. With but yeah. fastball. Would it be the same as Skip getting hit in the face with a fastball when the guy did it on purpose? And then I went is like it, this. Is it, was it that kind of joy? <laughs> no, I mean... It's, it's <laughs> so much higher. I, I don't know. Cause I, like, I, I've, like seen, to, I've don't seen some funny stuff, you awful. know what I mean? <laughs> like, like fun, no, funny stuff is great. Um, I mean, there's you find entertainment in all these different avenues, right? But uh, hunting, like the experience of the entire thing, yep. the preparation, the work that you're putting into it. And then, like you said, just so much of your time is just trying to spot it, right? It would, it would probably be what if I've had to make a parallel for us being in sports is the road trips and the hotels. And then, like, then you have that cool yeah. stuff that you would have yes. never normally had. And then, of course, the pinnacle is, is it's probably the kill right. itself, right? Do you find yourself meeting a whole new set of friends from this, obviously? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Have to. oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The amount of people, and, and you find more and more, right? You didn't realize how many people were involved in this until you start getting into it. And I've met people from many different states across the country. They're coming in uh just talked with a guy this morning he came in from uh montana he's like oh yeah i'm going to hunt up in the north so we sat there and chopped it up a little bit and i'm like oh i'm really familiar with this i actually guide so that's your that's your common pointers. language yeah. that, and that's yeah. that's awesome to do i i didn't i wasn't able to hang out with skip until because he was a baseball goal and only wanted to hang out with baseball guys until he knew that we both like magnet darts yeah and the office is when we join forces <laughs> but you're right i mean in the hockey world too if someone goes to play hockey you go yeah. oh well, that's my guy let me show you to a community that's pretty Pretty much yeah. open to that that's that's a nice like i guess fraternal yeah. type of organization yeah. so we're looking at your instagram right now and you you brought up a cool point that at the archery shop what you guys have is kind of a community posting where you know take out some of our archery stuff and then show us your kill show us your trophy mm -hmm. and kind of let the community share their experience of exploring through new mexico and and coming back okay. with food for their family. They tie it well. back into to you, right? Yeah, and that's no, great. absolutely. And they get to showcase it, and that's everyone's common ground. Well, yeah, and, and that's the cool thing about us, right? We don't work on commission. It's none of that. It's just we're a group of guys um, and our inventory manager, Annette. Um, <laughs> there she is. But we, we just love hunting. We love um, shooting bows. We love doing all that. And so helping the community and being a part of that where – hey, something I did to help this guy just get a little bit better and make sure that he was ready and his equipment was good to go. And then you saw, you know, you saw the clip up there and it's like, this is what he was able to accomplish. And so it's just such a cool community because they're so grateful for what you did and we're so grateful for the opportunity to, to do it. Well, some of, the, some of the uneducated people who've never been around hunting don't understand kind of the lifestyle. Yeah. But talk about the importance of hunting because when you pull the tag, it's not like you're just throwing money away. They use that money to help control herds, right. control population, control the grounds. Talk about some of the benefits of, uh, of hunting and what it, what it has on the environment. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point because it does get a bad rep in some communities um it's funny i talk about feeding my family and my wife's a vegan so um, <laughs> my, my daughter's been enjoying it you know um but yeah no i mean conservation is an extremely important part of this entire process and you figure kind of the whole nature versus nurture concept that is discussed regularly right um but when it comes to the nature side of this if we're not doing it it's still happening right you still have <clears throat> predators, you still have these things that are being attacked. I mean, you hear it on the news and these things are happening. And a lot of that has to do with overpopulation or, or whatever the case may be. So hunting is actually a part of that conservation. We are trying to thin down some of it. And when I say thin down, I don't mean like, oh, you're making them go extinct. That's not, They're like we're talking about mass population. And so if there's a benefit of it, they're just going to die from old age or something, you know, random is going to happen. Yeah, Why not take gonna, the benefit from it? A big cat's going to exactly. jump on their back and choke them out. What, exactly. Yeah, and the other thing is I think that in, in a byproduct of the conservation-minded uh, people and in, in issuing the tags, um, they have a pretty good inventory. Like there's people paid to figure out what – what population, what What's percentage the needs, yeah. to, needs to go. And, and, and I'm glad you cleared up. You said you were uh, drew the sandias for a tag. I had drawn the sandias button charcoal. And yeah. so then it's a good thing we talked about hunting tags instead. Yeah. So then I was going to present <laughs> it. And you're like, that's not what I meant yeah. by drawing it. But you did raise a, a ton of money with your charcoal drawing. Yeah, in the same yeah so seven bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Eight-year-old actually got swindled. <laughs> See, I don't have change. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea, though. And if we can get off the cuff here, yeah. I think that you should have like one of those heads and then someone can come back and lease it and be like, oh, I did it again. No. Oh, yeah, <laughs> just pose for pictures. Another 
other one, yeah, yeah, bring it to like like everyone pays poker in the garage. You're like, yeah, I don't know if you yeah. saw that earlier. It's, uh, and it's like it's like the tags all do back by. Yeah, it's like a library. Why is this happening? I don't know, man. Things are crazy out there. The animals are getting organized. <laughs> That's funny. Rent out your trophies. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, there's a big difference between you know trophy hunting yeah. and you know shooting a big elephant and putting it in your living room versus sure. you know. How do you feel about that? I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like these standing yeah. things. You know, like what did you do? You paid a bunch of money, just went up to him with poop. Like, yeah. I, no, I mean, uh, I'm kind of on the, the fence on certain things. I some, don't some like Jimmy like John's, I, by the way. I really don't like that's That's, that's his move. Yeah. He just walks up to it, and the guy, like, they walk up to a paralyzed elephant that's just barely blinking. So, yeah. got him again. Anyways. But, like, I, I have no personal interest to do that. Um, Thank you. You can like, see Like, giraffe, zebras. Elephants. Yeah, the, uh, zebra, you know, stuff, the, the, the I'm, giraffes I'm not, too. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's not my kind of style, but I will tell you, like, if I could go do my number one hunt in the state of New Mexico, would be a bigghorn sheep. That's it's one of the hardest to draw. It's it's almost impossible. I could draw yeah. it. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I'll show you. You, you probably you would. Don't need You'd to be go the guy out there. Watch this. In, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but outside of that, like, I, predator hunting is kind of cool. So, like, when you're talking about bears or mountain lions and all of that. Um, that's a whole different monster, yeah. right? And so I, I've never been able to take one of those, so I'd be super excited. To How do that. many do you think that it can handle? How many arrows would you have to shoot at it? <laughs> would it just run around going, Nah, I don't care. Where are you? Just yeah. predator. Just pick yeah. up your car. <laughs> it dep depends on where you shoot it, but uh, no. I mean, if you're proficient in, in what you do and your equipment is ready to go, and you put the placement where it's supposed to be, yeah. you know, it, it can it can do it. It can tear it up. Let's talk about some of the equipment because yeah. right now we're taking a look at your. Yeah. This is a compound bow. Now, yes. Grant, you and I were talking about, you know, back at, when you were in Boy Scouts, it was what, what's the old school bow? It's a, a, I, a recurve. A recurve. Yeah. Right? Just, like a it, traditional it, longbow. Part, I joke about this, but part of the Boy Scout process is you can't really enjoy any of it. So they make sure you get hurt first. And you're like, now nah, we'll show you the difference, but you need to get hurt first. So the old ones would just, you know, skim the inside of your arm. Oh, yeah. uh, and then and then this looks like you get to actually enjoy your shot. So yeah. I can see why it would perpetuate more uh, shooting. No, so talk, talk a little bit about this bow and, and yeah. kind of, you know, even talk pricing. I mean, sure. pounds, what do we need to know about it? Yeah, no. So, I mean, there's a, a lot of different things that go into it, which um, I'll address that right now because that can be intimidating, right? You're, you see this versus the old stick bows. You're like, oh, it's just a string and a stick and I pull it back. Um, it's, it is a little bit more involved, but it's not that intimidating once you understand. And I mean, that's part of what our responsibility when you come into our shop is we're going to teach you all about this. And so you still have the basic concepts, right? You have a riser and your cams on either side, the strings that, that hold. So when you're drawing back, everything's going to rotate at, at full draw. It's going to be like a triangle. Um, you have your sight here, your rest that flips up here. That's going to hold your arrow. That skip head over there, um, <laughs> and uh, once every once everything's in in there, uh, then it's just a matter of how, how do we start shooting. And so we go through. If you're a brand new beginner and you've never even um, touched a bow, uh, we're going to walk you through that entire process uh, because there is a lot that is involved to this. But after you start getting it to where you understand this. We will sit there and guide you through all of it. You'll sight it in, and by the time you walk out, I'm going to hit you. You know, you're going to hit close to. So, center. as a beginner, what what's the weight? Because I know it's yeah. categorized by weight. Yeah. So, there's a couple of different components when you're choosing a bow, right? So, what we're going to try to do is fit you in by your draw length. Everybody's draw length is a little bit different, and so we we measure you out, and then we start. Um, figuring out where on this we need to be. So if you're a 27 inch draw length or I'm a 29 and a half inch draw length, we're setting the bow to you because you go, you know, in your buddy's garage and pick up his old bow. And you're like, oh man, this is crazy. <laughs> it's like, really you know, a wrench on my yeah. shoulder. I would help right. you out and go whatever yeah. one inch below the maximum <laughs> right. ever recorded was. Right. And so, Get that so we're going to, we're going to fix that. And then uh, a lot of these bows, you'll see they go up to the standard is like 70 pounds. Um, but a lot of them are super adjustable too. So if you know, you, you're stepping in there for the first time or you know, it's a younger teenager um, or, or whomever, and it's like, oh, I can draw back 70 pounds. Well, 70 we pounds? can adjust them. Oh my yeah. God. No, you know, 35, 40 pounds is a pretty good start. Um, I would go for the least amount of work. Yeah. What's that one? What's the helium setting? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a, like rifle. 55, you know? <laughs> a rifle. 55? <laughs> a Do me a favor, grab yeah. the boat yeah. and then no, just pull, sure. it, pull it back. So yeah, I'm gonna see. How uh, I was absolutely begging yeah. him to shoot an apple. Oh, is, this a, is this a 70 so, pound? What? 
So this one's backed off a little bit. It's probably like 65. Um, what I will tell you is if you're going to go do this, don't absolutely do not let it go. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to pull it back and all that. But typically you do like a release, you know, something like this. Yeah, a little trigger. I'm not going to do it just because mm -hmm. if I bump it, it's going to blow the bow up. So okay, it's called dry firing. Um, well, so we've never seen a bow blow firing. up. Yeah. Though, it might be <laughs> yeah. something we like. We, we tried to blow one up on a video on our Instagram, so check that <laughs> out. See, I but, like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we just pull one back. Right and now, right how long there? can you sit in that position before you start shaking? Um, Typically, I mean, I can do it for uh, quite a while, but like, start so one down. of the things in the uh, in, with the bow, and you can tell this the draw length super short, right? So this one, this bow wouldn't fit me very well. But um, one of the things ab about this is, as you get your technique down and all of that, you're not actually. I'm using most of my arms right now, but you're using more of your your shoulders and your back muscles. So when I'm holding into this. Like I can sit there because I'm, you know, like the push pull. See, I jumped a little bit, um, but like the push pull aspect of it, you can sit here and hold it for a long time because it's not actually in your arms. Mark, how does it feel? Are you uh, a little Mark jumpy? <laughs> but uh, no, I mean that that's super important though because we've had a lot of people and they're like, oh yeah, let me check this out, and you, you like let it go, and then the, the whole thing blows. You yeah. Know? And, so, uh, so is this a mid range or a yeah? High so this end? is kind of a mid range. Um, <clears throat> this is a Hoyt uh, Torx, and so for th this one is kind of cool because it comes with all this stuff, your sight and your rest, and so if you wanted to walk in and you're like, hey, I, I don't know anything about this, I don't want to get into the weeds on the accessories and all that, give me something that I can just go out and start shooting. You could do this, and this one's about 900 bucks for a, the whole package. Nice. When you Get start one, talking please. like high-end premium bows, um, you know, like they come as bare bows, so it's just the riser. You don't have all these accessories and everything from, you know, Hoyt Matthews, PSE, uh, Elite, Bear. Um, but, like, some of those are starting at, like, 1,300, 1,400 bucks without any of the accessories. How much is this way? So. Out the door. Um, that one's probably about Child's play. five, just under five pounds. With that everything bad. on it, yeah. Do you know, you're a lefty-righty mix. What do you shoot with? You think? I do this way. Yeah. Are you right or left eye dominant? Um, I don't oh, know is that, that what part. It's based off of yeah. your eye? Uh, I mean, typically that's what we try to go off of because if you try to sight in like up I here, would probably typically there's a peak. Yeah. If so I had to right look eye? at an amoeba on the <laughs> microscope, this yeah. is what I would use. This guy. This um, is my amoeba eye. But, but <laughs> we, is, we factor that in for sure because yeah, cool. if you can't even see out of your right eye, and, but you are uh, right-handed, that's not going to do any benefit to shoot a bow. And we, what we do is it's not on here, but there's a peep. So you're actually looking through the peep to sight it well, out. This makes sense. I've learned in every sport, like this is like the heavy to hold the, the whatever hand this becomes the yeah. finesse hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. so everything's just kind of on the back right here. Yeah, and I'm just holding and holding and holding. You know what? We we would we would probably get one, but at Skip's wedding, his parent his, his Skip gave away pocket knives, and then we weren't allowed to have more than three minutes because we were pretend finding that his dad took them all away. So I'm sure this wouldn't last very long enough. His yeah. dad saw us have it. Yeah, just don't take a pocket knife to that. Uh, yeah. You know, talk a little bit more about the archery shop. Where are you guys yeah. located? Yeah, so we're over off of uh, Carlisle and Candelaria. Um, We've been there since 2009. Uh, the archery shop started back in 2001, uh, but we've been at that location since then. Uh, we have a 20 yard, uh, 18 lane uh, range. So like he was saying, you can bring a date if you want. We have group lessons, we do birthday parties. Um, we will sit there and gear up for as far as you want to go to as little as you want to go. Sure. Hey, I just want to, I want to sit here and, and poke some down range. Cool, we'll do that. You want I, to sit there and get serious, we can do that. You absolutely need a physical shop, and, and that's, I think that's always in the mainstay. Yeah. Because people, this is something you got to hold, right? You can't oh, go, yeah. I was on the yeah. internet, and this, right, one, right. this one did the simulation of which one I need. I think right. that's cool. And I love the need for like uh, brick and mortar places to stay yeah. there. It's probably neat to meet you and, and then hold all the varieties. So yeah. that's pretty cool. That's, oh, that's here to stay. Yeah, well, it's great. I think it's kind of a, an Albuquerque staple, the archery shop, man. So we appreciate that. We're going to have links to your website yeah, and, thank you. and, and everything that you have uh, on our on our website as We're well. We're learning so much this season already. <laughs> Every season is a learning experience. Coming up, here's why you're going to want to stay tuned. It's everybody's favorite. Do it, Mark. Wait, wait. Mark. Oh, Q. yeah. Finally. Skips tips. Yeah. This Bullseye. is ABQ. Hi, we're back on segment three. And one thing we want to take care of, and we forgot, Amanda Miss Sprinkles was the wife of our guest, and we did not fit it in there. So to save their marriage, I'm going to talk about it. And we, we hope her business is still going great. And we heard signs that they were. Now we're going to get into segment three with Skip's Tips. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Oh, yeah, it is. Skips tips. Anything that saves us time, makes us more money, allows us to have more fun in real estate or in real life. <clears throat> Diapers, diamonds, downsizing, divorce, death. It's the five D's of real estate. In our local market, we're in a little bit of a transition from where we were during the Great Migration. See, there's more homes on the market. Sellers always have a reason to sell, and it's those five D's we talked about. So what does this mean? For buyers, if you've been on the fence and kind of waiting and watching, you're starting to see more inventory, more properties to choose from, and sellers that are willing to make concessions or even make a deal. What does it mean for sellers? Well, you better have all your ducks in a row. Your home better be shinier than the competition and priced appropriately. So as we move towards a more balanced real estate market here in Albuquerque, it's important to understand what type of market we're in. So if you want to learn more about our tips and tricks for navigating this market, as well as learn more about our hassle-free process for buying and selling homes locally, be sure to reach out. And as always, share this with a friend and tell them Skip said so. Oh yeah. So that's what that song, I'm going through the big D, don't mean Dallas, and then that dance? Or like well, the, that is the dance, yeah. yeah. Do, 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 do. They're like <laughs> du the ducks, diamonds, and double whoppers. <laughs> du the, duck, dip, the, duck, the, dive. Yeah, the eight things you need to sell your house, <laughs> starting with ducks in a row. Uh, great episode. Uh, season five, just chugging along, dude. No hiccups so far. We'll see how this plays Wait, out. We owe it all to you guys, the faithful viewer. Who oh. keeps keep sending in donations and sending in the emails and, and giving us bouquets in the front of the studio We appreciate doors. all the Bitcoin donations. My wallet's online. Um, <laughs> Every Wednesday night, Sunday morning, and then uh, all across the world on YouTube and Spotify. Ron Bell, we need you this season. <laughs> Badly. This is all about you, ABQ.